The internet connects our world, but what actually connects the internet is a bunch of undersea fiber optic cables that connects all the countries and the continent to create the internet as we know it. These fiber optic cables carry a massive amount of data to millions of people that goes to show the level of advancement and sophistication of these inventions. One fun fact for you is that one of the pioneers of the fiber optic cable is in fact a Ghanaian. His name is Dr. Somas Mensa, and though he's not the inventor of the fiber optic cable itself, his contribution to the development has dramatically improved the cost efficiency of producing these cables, making it possible to produce at the scale that they are being used today. So what happened to our internet? Ghana has six undersea cables connected to us, and these six cables are what have been providing us with the internet for the past couple of years. Or oh, at least that's what I thought. Now these six cables are ACE, Glow One, SAT One, Main One, the West Africa cable system, and the latest one, which is to Africa. So now, how can cables deep within the ocean get damaged? One way they can get damaged is by ship anchors dropping on them and dragging them along the seabed. This actually can happen in one of the most common cases of the fiber optic cables getting damaged. Another reason is by natural stuff like the tectonic plates of the seabed shifted and so they can cover the fiber optic cables and they can drag them along, making them ineffective. And I'm sure as you've all seen, sometimes marine life like sharks can decide that the economy is so hard and there's no food, so they go in for fiber optic cables because they contain a lot of fiber. Now, according to multiple sources, out of these six cables, four of them have been reported to have been damaged at certain points in the ocean. Now, the cables damaged are the ACE, SAT-1, MAIN-1, and the West Africa cable system. Now, these four cables are the ones that primarily serve MTN and Vodafone, which is now Telecel, and that is why those two networks were hit most with this interruption. Now, here's the interesting part. There are currently two working cables in Ghana, which is the to Africa cable and the Glue one cable. There doesn't seem to be enough information announcement about the to Africa cable going live on the internet, but a couple of sources state that it has. So if it has, then that's the reason why Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp were working during the disruptions because all these apps are owned by Facebook or Meta. And I'm guessing that Snapchat probably also uses those cables for their internet transmissions. Now, although there's no concrete information online stating that that's the case, the current situation provides enough evidence to assume so. And now the second cable, which is rightly called Glow One, is owned by Global Pop, which manages the network Glow. Now, I'm sure most of us remember Glow, the network that came to Ghana with a bang, but left almost as soon as it came. Yeah, they are definitely not dead. In fact, Glow is the second biggest telecommunication provider in Nigeria, right behind MTN Nigeria. Interestingly enough, Glow did not just vanish from the system. In fact, if you are in the Glow sim right now, you probably see that it's registered as Airtel Tigo or AT. And that is because just before Glow seemed to vanish when the country needed it most, it actually partnered with Airtel Tigo in 2022 giving Airtel Tigo access to Glow's undersea fiber optic cable, which is the Glow One. And that is why the Airtel Tigo network did not get affected by these interruptions. Now, the underdogs have risen from their grave and they are making so much noise on social media, it's crazy. It also looked like Google services seem not to have been affected too, because YouTube, Gmail and Google Drive were all working well during this period. Snapchat as well didn't seem to have been affected at all, which is crazy because why are my emails from Outlook not coming? and my snaps are coming. I, I'm not sure who is selecting what things go on which cable, but it was just interesting to know. So now, how long would it take to fix? Typically, these things can take anywhere between two weeks to about a month or two, because you have to deploy the engineers on C to find out where exactly the fault is, what kind of fault it is, and then after that, they'll send the appropriate engineers to go to the part and go and fix it. A current report state that it's going to take about four to five weeks to fix it to completion but they'll be able to use backup systems which will be able to supply us with internet for the meantime. So if you're watching me right now, probably your internet is much better than it was last week. Now here's my problem. How on earth do four out of six cables get damaged at the same time? No, you think about it. Six cables and 66% of them get spot at the same time on the same day. It doesn't make any sense. So here's what I'm thinking, right? Some of the cables may have been damaged for a while, but since the other cables were available and were working seamlessly, they saw no need to spend money to fix it. And now this is my problem with what happened. How do we expect to grow our resources if we don't maintain the ones we already have? If you keep doing this, you keep going in a cycle of wasting the things we already have because we don't learn to maintain the things that we already own. Because there's absolutely nothing you can say to convince me that four, a whole four out of six cables got damaged at the same time. 
And so if you fix the damaged ones earlier, we wouldn't have noticed that there was a problem at all because the backup system would have been able to handle us perfectly. And that is what I call maintenance culture, which is severely lacking in this part of our world. And this problem is not exclusive to Ghana at all. All the countries along the coast which have been anchored to these cables are to be blamed because they all definitely saw that the cables were not working. Honestly, I hope I'm wrong and I hope that miraculously a shark was going around munching on these cables because otherwise this would be absolutely terrible. This would actually be a question I invent so that the cables are managed and maintained well with the right maintenance routine taking on them. Because we've all seen how ineffective everything is without the internet. Some jobs were rendered useless and now we understand that the internet is a key resource which shouldn't be handled anyhow. Hopefully this doesn't repeat itself and we all need to tell the tale of how Snapchat got priority over emails in 2024. I'm Michelle Manuel and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share with friends and family all across Africa. Alright, so just as a teaser, the next videos on my channel are going to be crazy. The next video is going to be my one year transition to Apple. Yes, me, a hardcore Android and Windows fan, has switched to Apple for a year and I have a lot of thoughts. Some of them you may guess, but some of them you probably don't have any idea that I loved or hated them. But until next time, keep browsing and I'll see you next time.